Hey everybody, I want to talk to you about development and programming is hard. No matter the show people put on, sometimes it's challenging and you can be stuck on a problem and not know why you're stuck and then you have eventually figure out why you're stuck but the solution you implement doesn't work. And it's fun. It's like a puzzle. And I don't want you to be discouraged when you run into a problem. Like, let me give you an example. Say you have a drop down that's supposed to populate. For example, let's say it's supposed to populate um, a list of different categories. And you go to work on that list and you're supposed to add a new category. Simple enough. You either add a new list to the array that's being uh, rendered on the front end from the back end or however it is, and you think to yourself, oh, it's simple. But then you go into the code and you realize, wait a minute, this isn't like I thought it was. There's different layers of abstraction. And then you find out, once you get to the right spot, that's another thing, is figuring out where the state of the application needs to be in order to solve the problem. And sometimes that takes time. But say you're supposed to add an item to a dropdown. And you realize when you add the item, it breaks the dropdown. So you dig a little bit deeper and you find out that, wait a minute, this dropdown we have our own information, like an array or something, but that has to match an incoming client data. And if it doesn't match, it'll break and it won't render. And there's a lot of things that you will figure out, domain knowledge that you don't know at first. And when you start programming, you dig in the code base, you figure out, it's not as straightforward as you thought it might be. Now, I run into this all the time at my job. And when that happens, you can reach out to seniors. You can try to figure it out yourself. There might be information you don't know. So that's an example. Another example is, say you have a button and when you click that button, it sends a request, a post request to a route, to an action in your controller. And that controller within that function, that action, triggers a service. And in that service, you're calling a request model. And within that model, you're calling a worker to enqueue a job. And within that worker, you're calling a client doing another post request to an endpoint. So development can be confusing. There's so many abstractions. And when you're in a large code base, you have to figure out where do I connect the dots? And with the button example, when you click that button, it sends a request. It also builds a PDF, right? So it's doing many things at once. And that PDF is also being stored in storage in an S3 bucket. So it can be retrieved later. And you're sending that PDF attachment that's rendered when you click that button. You're sending that in a post request to an external source. So there's a lot of pieces going on. And if you can figure out how, I call it the tracer bullets. I didn't make up that term, but I think in the, uh, what's the book called? The Pragmatic Programmer. I should be better at that. I think that's the title. It talks about tracer bullets. So when you start an application, you understand how 
different pieces connect. For example, say in Rails you have a controller, and in that controller you're calling that service, right? And in that service you're calling that trigger function. You're making a new instance of that service and calling a trigger function. And then you can go to that service and see what you're initializing, what uh, variables you're passing through that are in that controller. So you can use them in the service. And there's a lot of complexity, but if you can set up where things connect in an application, you can begin to see how the puzzle fits together. So when you start a project or a story on Jira, with your team, I take time and try to really understand the story. Because if you don't understand the story, you can't even begin coding. That's why a lot of people get stuck is because they don't know what to code. They'll just dive into the code base and then they feel lost. So when there's a story, say it's a 508 issue, an accessibility issue, and you need to add something like an area label or an aught tag to an image. Again, it sounds straightforward, but in the story, you might not have enough information. It might not tell you all the accepted criteria, your ACs or AC accepted criteria that you need to know in order to get to the point to solve that issue to implement that story. And again, that might be the state of the application. You might need to have a certain factory set up uh, for a user or a role. You might have a certain um, feature flag that needs to be enabled. You might have to, um, there might have to be a client set up with incoming data. So all of these pieces, if you could just find out when you start a story, target where you're at. And that could be as simple sometimes on the front end as figuring, figuring out what page am I on, right? And you could just type some text in the HTML. Oh, I'm on this page. Or you could find out the params and you can output that, uh, puts or whatever, print that to the uh, page and render that and find out where you're at. Then you can trace the route. You can find out what route. That route will tell you what controller, you know, if you're using Rails. So it might seem like a lot, and it is, even for myself as a developer, as a programmer, as a software engineer, dare I call myself. But if you can find out where those tracer bullets are at, where things connect to each other, where in the back end you're calling that function, you're rendering the data on the front end and trace everything back, read the code around it, figure out what's going on. So when you start a story, it's almost like reading a book. You open the code base and you kind of read what's around, around it. You, you might find an ID or a class that you could search for to find the place you need to be at, or maybe some text you can search for. So I hope that helps you when you're in a huge code base and you feel like, man, I don't know what I'm doing. There's different ways you can connect the dots. And those are some of the ways. I'll try to put out more videos as I can. Um, I recently injured my right calf. I tore the calf muscle and all I did was take a step. It snowed here. I was outside and I cleared the snow off my minivan and I could understand if I twisted my ankle or I bent down or something and stretched the calf muscle. But all I did was take a step. I heard a loud pop. Like it was half the impact, the sound of a 22 that went off really loud. And it felt like somebody hit me in the back of my calf with an ice ball. I actually looked around behind me and thought my neighbor threw an ice ball at my calf. And I turned around and nobody was behind me. And then when I took the next step, I realized, oh, I tore my muscle. Because now when I try to flex it, it, uh, it doesn't flex as much because that muscle is actually torn um, that used to be attached to the bone. 
So I have to figure out if I need to get surgery. I'm fixing to get an MRI. Um, anyhow, I just wanted to give you an update on my life. Um, I love my job. I'm having fun programming. And uh, I hope you do as well. Please like and subscribe. This is Coding Mountain Man.